Hey, welcome everyone to the, the Tesla D event. Uh, as, you know, there's been a lot of uh, speculation as to what uh, the you know the D stands for. Uh, yes, well, you'll notice my pants have Velcro seams. <laughs> 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 they, may have, they may have mixed appeal. Um, and uh, there's also a great deal of speculation as to uh, you know, what the something else was. And uh, I learned a lot, um, it, it, including things that I didn't think were physically possible. Uh, so uh, we, let, let, let's go to the, the first D. As, as you've probably learned by the internet, since it's impossible to keep anything private these days, um, the, the, the D stands for dual motor. So, so let's, let's bring up the side. So there you can see you've got a, a motor in the front and a motor in the back, uh, hence the, the dual nature of it. Uh, but you know uh, what would be greater than, than sort of seeing a, a slide is to, to show you the, the actual car. So let's release the Titan. So uh, here, we, here we have the, the, the chassis and the, the, the drivetrain of the dual motor Model S. Obviously got uh, the, the, the front drive unit, the rear drive unit. And the, the, the thing that makes this uh, unique and special and sort of better than uh, all-wheel drive in the past is because you can dynamically shift the power from front to rear at the millisecond level. So you can very quickly adjust torque uh, more than is is possible really with a, a mechanically linked system. So all all-wheel drive systems out there are just mechanically linked with with a shaft. So it's it's like the equivalent of being sort of analog, uh, whereas this is this is a, a digital system. So it, it's it, with a system like this, it's it's uh, inherently able to achieve better road holding than a mechanically linked system that's just there with with a, a single engine. And it, it, we're able to actually improve almost everything about the car, which is, it's a rare case that you're able to do something like that. Uh, the, the, so the, 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 the acceleration gets a little faster, the top speed is higher, and, and uh, something that's, 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 I think, uh, that is for the first time ever, the, the range, the efficiency actually increases. Okay. So... As you as you probably know, with other all -wheel, with, with all all-wheel drive systems out there, um, the, the the you get less mileage. It's less efficient to have uh, to have an all-wheel drive system. But in the case of the Model S, because we're able to have two drive units where we can shift the power from from front to rear and and constantly be at the optimal efficiency point for for each motor, uh, we, we're actually able to overcome the penalty of the increased mass of the motor. So any, any given motor engine has a power versus efficiency curve. And the default behavior of the car will be, the first priority, of course, will be uh, traction control, road holding. Um, and then the, the second will be efficiency. And then as soon as you punch the accelerator, it'll just go to max power. And efficiency, obviously, is less of a concern in that situation. <laughs> um, but, the, but this is, this, it, literally everything improves about the car with dual motor. Uh, there's, there's, no, there's no sort of technical drawback in this case. Uh, so, and, and we've, we've also, in, in, the, in the highest power version, the P85D, we've actually retained the larger rear motor and added, uh, and added the medium-sized motor to the front, which basically gives the, the car about uh, half again as much power. Because the P85 started was pretty good, uh, you know, on the power front, as probably a bunch of you have, have those cars. Um, but but this this car is is nuts. It's like it's like taking off from a carrier deck. It's just bananas. Um, you know, it's like having having your own personal roller coaster that you can just use at any time. Uh, so that uh, I mean, it's it's really mind blowing. In fact, the the target that we had for performance was to try to meet uh, one of the greatest the, the the acceleration of one of the greatest supercars of all time, which is the McLaren F1. And so we were able to actually achieve a, a 3.2 second zero to 60. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, it's mad. Okay. <laughs> in, in fact, just just you know, we're, we're going to have a, an option the, in, in the option selection. Um, you, you'll be able to choose three settings, which is normal, sport, and insane. <laughs> it will actually say insane. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> uh, so that that's um, it's, it's pretty exciting. We're really really proud of uh, what what. Uh, our engineering team has been able to accomplish here. It took a, a lot of effort, and I think we've, we've got uh, a technical solution we're, we're, we can be really, really proud of. And it's also one that will continue to improve over time. So as we, you know, we'll, we'll roll out the initial uh, cars with dual motor, but then we'll, um, we'll keep updating the, the software and firmware and improving, for instance, the, the torque vectoring and the, the, the road holding under various circumstances. So it'll, it, it'll keep improving by nuances over time. All right, so let's move to the next, the, the something else, <laughs> which, <laughs> so we've been able to accelerate autopilot and, and bring, it, bring it to market faster than uh, originally anticipated. In fact, the, what, what people haven't quite realized is that all cars produced for the past two weeks have the autopilot hardware. So it's, it's actually in production. In fact, every car coming off the line in Tesla at the factory has the autopilot hardware. So let's, let's uh, look at the first, uh, the various elements of how we're doing autopilot. It, it consists of a synthesis of, of four different systems. The first is a, a forward-looking radar. So that, that's scanning the cars in front of you, and it's, it's, it's quite long range. So it's able to see things at, at a long distance. It's also able to see through fog, through snow, through sand, through anything, basically. All right, moving on to the A. Um, the, so we, we've, it consists of four parts. The, the first part is the long-range uh, uh, radar, which can see through basically anything. And uh, the, then the, the next element is a camera with uh, image recognition. So it, it's able to read stop signs, distinguish uh, pedestrians, uh, uh, look at traffic lights, and, and also serve as a backup system to the radar. The third system is 360-degree uh, uh, long-range ultrasonic sonar. Um, so this, this, this basically establishes a protective cocoon around the vehicle and it will attempt to make whatever the sort of smart move is um, from a safety standpoint looking at the ultrasonics. Now the good thing about the ultrasonics is they can see even soft objects. So you, uh, they can see a sort of a small child or even a dog. Um, they can, they're, they're, they're very sensitive and they operate at all speeds. So we're able to, to do this from zero miles an hour to 155 miles an hour. And it's, it's a, it, it'll detect if there's a car in your blind spot, if you've got a, a highway barrier on one side, if there's a, you know, something you might you know, move into in any, any way possible. Um, and then the, the final element is integrating that with the uh, navigation um, and basically the GPS system and real-time traffic. So we integrate those four systems in. The, the car can do almost anything. Um, so we're able to uh, obviously do lane keeping on freeways, do um, automatic cruise control, uh, active emergency uh, braking so that uh, it'll break if it sees any object that you're going to collide with. Um, and um, it'll, it'll, it'll self-park, so it'll be automatic parallel parking, automatically going to a garage. Um, in fact, it'll, when you, you get home, you'll actually be able to, to just step out of the car and have it park itself in your garage, including <laughs> it, it'll, it'll open the door and it'll go in and park itself. Um. <laughs> and then, then something, something I'd like to do, um, uh, which I think many of our engineers will be hearing this in real time, um, <laughs> is, is have the charge connector plug itself in <laughs> like, like an articulating, like a sort of a snake, like Metal Gear Solid or something. Um, so yeah, like just plug itself in. Um, so th I, th I think we'll, I we'll, we'll probably do something like that. Um, so then you can just get out of your car and go park itself in your garage. Um, and then uh, going, a going a step further, you, um, you'll be able to summon the car if you're on private property, because oh, you have to be on private property for this. Um, you can actually summon the car, and we'll, the car will come to wherever you are, and it'll 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 use the ultrasonic sensors, kind of like a insect antenna, 
um, because it can it can detect even small soft objects with the the ultra with with the ultrasonics, and and just it'll sort of slowly make its way to you and and then and then stop and be ready to go. It can actually go even a step beyond that, which is if you have if you have your calendar turned on, uh, it'll it'll meet you there. <laughs> <laughs> And so if, you, if you're getting ready to go to work for something and, and it knows, oh, you're, you're going to need to leave uh, half an hour before work, you can say, okay, I'd, I'd like it to just uh, come out and have the air conditioning done and everything done, uh, your, your music playing, everything's just ready to go and it'll just come and, and be there. <laughs> so. <laughs> A very important point, though, in, in addition to the sensors, we, we, you have to have precise control. So we, we have an all digital control system, high precision, um, really low latency uh, uh, control system. Starting with the, the motors, obviously they're, they're electric motors. They don't have the latency and the, the sort of slow uh, spool up of uh, gasoline engines. Then uh, we go to the, the, the brakes. So we've, um, one of the big upgrades to the car is an electromechanical braking system. So it's able, it's just one of the most advanced braking systems in the world. It's able to very precisely control the amount of braking and also get to, to high braking levels very, very quickly. Uh, instead of having the normal vacuum assist system, uh, this, is, this is an electromechanical system. And then um, we've got the, uh, that, that's combined with an electric steering. So it's electric power steering. So the whole, the whole, the whole system is sort of fully electric, digital control, low latency. This is all really important to having a great uh, driving experience so that the car is doing things in a, in, a, in a natural way. All right, next one. So this gives you a, a sense of the, the new interface. Um, and uh, the, 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 you can actually sort of see where cars or, or obstacles are around the car on the, on the instrument panel. So it'll actually show cars that are, you know, the distance of the car ahead of you, cars moving to the, to the sides and behind. And, um, and you, can, you can adjust the sensitivity of the autopilot. So do you want to be in a sort of an aggressive autopilot or, you know, less aggressive? Um, and uh, yeah, so it's, and it, it'll, it'll warn you with sort of, the, it, with initially a, a, a visual warning if there's a potential collision risk, uh, like so it'll turn, turn the object red. And then it'll give you an audible warning if you don't see that. And of course, it'll, it'll, res it'll resist steering into things that it thinks are danger. So you can still overpower the, the steering, but it's going to give you a tactile feedback that you're, you're probably uh, headed towards something that the car thinks may be dangerous. So that's, uh, that, that's what we have for, for you tonight. But uh, I mean, my, my words are, are nothing compared to the car. So. Um, we've, got, we've got a whole bunch of cars ready for you to take a test ride in, and uh, I think you're really going to enjoy it. This is like an amusement park ride, um, and, and just to sort of tone it down, you'll, you'll see what the car's like with you know, anywhere from three to five people in it. Imagine if it was only you. It's that much. It's a, it's a lot faster. So uh, have a great evening, and enjoy the test drives. Yeah.